Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a little bit different to my usual art videos. I'm starting a series called Scribble Tips. Basically I just want to get a few different videos together with tips about how to do arty things. Each video will have a theme and today's video's theme is inking and particularly line art. I've been wanting to do tutorial type videos uh, lately and I thought this is a good way to start out. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Number one, ink with a steady hand. First tip, you can hold your breath during drawing to keep your hand steady, but obviously don't hold it too long. Make sure you rotate the page because your hand naturally follows the curvature of your wrist and going the opposite way of that can make your lines look more hesitant, not as strong. Also, it's a lot easier to draw vertical lines coming towards you than going away from you. Number two, line weight. To add interest and draw attention to specific parts of your drawing, use thick and thin lines. You can achieve this with a few different size fine liners and even a brush pen. Lines aren't just there to outline your work. You can use them to convey texture and tone and shadows. For example, on the bottom parts of your subject, where there's more shadows, use thicker lines. It also helps to put a thicker outline around the whole outside of your object because it brings it in all together and solidifies it. Also, when two lines or things intersect, add a little bit of thickness there. I don't know why, but it can add a lot of visual interest and can even make your art look a bit better. These things help to make your line work look more polished and refined. Number three, wash your hands. No, seriously, it may not be obvious to some, but even if your hands look nice and clean, the oils in your skin can affect the texture of the paper and the ink may not lay down as nicely and it could even be prone to smearing. Washing your hands beforehand can prevent this. Also, you can use a separate piece of paper to rest your hand on instead of resting your palm on your artwork. That can also help as well. Break those lines. Sometimes drawing broken lines can really add visual interest to your piece. Especially when drawing a complete line may be too heavy or pronounced particularly in areas where there will be extra light or in some areas where you don't want to draw too much attention. This can also help when you want your line art to look not like a colouring page. I don't know why, it just helps. Use of a light box. I've mentioned this a number of times before in my videos, but I'm just going to say it again. Using a light box to ink your artwork on a separate piece of paper can be highly effective because the paper you sketch on can be very overworked, especially if you're fi erasing and fixing up different parts and changing poses, etc. Sometimes, if you overwork the paper, it can change the texture and then the ink and colour won't lay down as nicely and you may not be able to erase the whole sketch. It also means you can scan a sketch, resize, change parts and print it out and you won't need to use an eraser. If you make a mistake, you don't lose your sketch and you get to keep it afterwards. If you're unable to get a light box, you can use a window or a light underneath a glass table. There are also apps for smartphones and iPads that can do the same thing as a light box. I use this in most of my artworks and to be honest, it's very important to me. Scanning. Another tip is to scan your line art. Seriously, this is very useful because if you make a mistake during colouring, you can just print it out again and all won't be lost. You may also fix minor mistakes with Photoshop or even change the colour of your line art. Printer ink works fine with Copic markers, but you may need to find a printer that has waterproof ink for things like watercolour. You can also scan two separate pieces of art and combine them together to make a finished work. Trust me, this is not cheating. It's just another tool you can keep in your arsenal. Or arts and all. Hashtag sorry not sorry. 
Which brings me to another tip, coloured line art. There's plenty of other colours in the spectrum to line than black. Lining in different colours can change the whole feel of a piece. It can be used to add an extra, an extra splash of colour, or it can be used to make the line art blend in with the piece so it's not as noticeable. You may feel that black lines are too harsh, or you just want to get in small details like freckles and a marker may be too thick for that. Fine liners can be sold in many different colours other than black. For example, I own a few Copic multi-liners in pink, wine and sepia colours, and I plan to get more. Hatching and cross-hatching When you want to convey shadows using your line art, hatching and cross-hatching can really help. Basically, you draw straight lines close together, going in the same direction, wherever you want to add shadow, and that can really help deepening different parts. And when combined with some effective colouring, it can really make your piece stand out from the rest. Cross hatching is very similar, except you draw lines in the opposite direction over the top of those, and this can darken it even further. You can use both on the one drawing to really take advantage of this tip. And finally, compatibility. It is true that not all fine liners or inking pens are made the same. Some fine liners aren't compatible with different materials. For example, some pens aren't waterproof so they can't be used with watercolour. And some inks aren't Copic proof so you can't use them with Copic markers. You should always test first. Just draw a few lines and then go over the top with some markers or some water just so that you can tell if they're compatible because I would prefer much to do this instead of doing an artwork and not realizing and then it ruins your piece but anyways um, this video is getting towards the end and I hope that you enjoyed this little scribble tips video make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already and check out my other videos where I do speed paints and lots of arty things that's all from me, so I hope you liked this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!